Hello! So today's video is going to be a little different and I'll actually be showing you something where this is only the second time I've done it. I'd been experimenting a bit with ceramics through one of the arts organizations I work with and actually ended up teaching a beginner ceramics class. By the end of it, after my first couple classes that I took as a student, and I do enjoy it, but I'm such a working small, little picky fine detail person that I was thinking, hmm, maybe I'd be more suited to something like polymer clay. I remembered using Sculpey as a little kid, and I'm like, you know what, why don't I revisit that? I also really don't like glazing. I don't like that you don't know what you're going to get. I mean, you can kind of guess, but the fact that even mixing colors, they look totally different before they're baked, so you can't really mix a specific color you want. That just drives me insane. It just doesn't work for me. Some people find that the beauty of the process. I do not think it's beautiful at all. It frustrates me. So I wanted to do something where I could use paint. Now, most people that use polymer clay use actual different colors of clay rather than painting it. So I did some research though and found that you can actually paint them as long as you prime them with gesso first. And I just like painting. I enjoy the look of painting more than the flat color and it's more fun for me personally. And the other benefit I found was it's a little more economical for me because I can just buy a big bulk box of white Sculpey and then use that for everything rather than having to invest in a bunch of different colors. So I'm making some cute little 3D art to put in a picture frame for my niece actually, but it's safe because she's a baby and so she doesn't watch YouTube videos yet. Because this project is kind of a 2D, 3D blend relief sort of thing, I'm going to be working with a lot of flat pieces. And the first thing I'm going to do is squish around the clay in my hands and get it warmed up. I got a lot of great little cookie cutter type things for clay on Amazon that are the right size for making smaller items. And so once I have it rolled out, I'm going to cut out my background pieces I picked. I have a foam backing in the same size as the window on my frame. And I also have some sketches of adorable triceratops that I kind of use to work out the design I might want beforehand. So I'm kind of just laying out how I might want my background that my dino friend is going to go on top of first. See how I'm cutting out two clouds here? Yeah, shouldn't have done that. You'll see later. <laughs> I have an interestingly shaped frame, so let's just say that though I did trace the inner area where the glass usually is correctly, I forgot to compensate for some leafy little squigglies that overlap over that part from the front, so it, you'll see. You'll see in the future. Now I want all these little pieces to actually stick together, but I'm not trying to crush them. So this needs a delicate touch. I'm just tapping them down lightly together and then very, very, very lightly just rolling over with my roller again, just to make enough pressure so that they stick together. You don't need to completely smash them. Now I'm just using two different shaped circles for the body and the head, and I'm going to use my tools to shape it more exactly from those two base geometric shapes. Now I'm just using two different shaped circles for the body and the head, and I'm going to use my tools to shape it more exactly from those two base geometric shapes. A lot of shaping can really be done with your fingers, and I also learned, thank you Google, that if you end up with some really deep fingerprints in your clay, you can actually use baby oil to just gently rub any of those out, kind of buff them out at the end. For more fine details, tools are great. Also from Amazon, I asked for all this stuff for my birthday last March. And I'm just now getting around to playing around with it within these last like two months. So these wooden tools that kind of have a pencil tip shaped end on them are really, really great for pushing in fine details that you want to be more hard edged. And then I also have some rubbery tipped ones that are great for smoothing everything out. So you'll see what I do with each of them. It's not an exact science for me at this point. I just kind of play with it until it's the shape I want. And what's great is 
this type of clay is very forgiving so at any point you can just re-smush it and go back in if you make a mistake it's not the end of the world you can just smooth it back out and keep going pretty easily from these two circles i'm going to be building the shape of the face making a more prominent snout i don't know if that's what you call it with dinosaurs but that front part that sticks out <laughs> the mouth and then also shaping the body adding little short legs and then i'm going to be also additionally adding on some spikes as you can see i used my rubbery tool to smooth the edges out along the bottom as i attach the spikes and this not only looks cleaner but it makes sure that the pieces are actually joined and they won't just fall off after i bake it I used my circle cutters again to get the right shape for the nice little crown that Triceratops always have. Side note, I just realized as I said crown, I did this fabulous dramatic sweeping motion around the perimeter of my head even though I'm recording a voiceover and you can't actually see me. So there you go. To attach my dinosaur friend, same thing, just a little bit of pressure, but without distorting the shape. Very, very gentle and careful. And I did also roll over the top a little bit, but as you can see, it didn't flatten anything down. I'm just applying a tiny bit of even pressure to get it stuck. Gesso time. So I applied my gesso coat with a flat brush, and those are the brushes that are rectangular shaped and flat on the end. This is because these are going to get the most even coat Without getting that buildup of paint streaks, we don't want that. We want this coat to be as thin and even as possible, and I'm brushing over anywhere where the gesso is built up and not just completely thin and flat. Once that's dry, I'm adding my base coats of acrylic paint everywhere. This needs a couple base coats generally of just flat color before you go in and add details because the color does go on a little bit differently. Even with the gesso primer, it goes on to the baked Sculpey a little bit slippery. That's the best term I could think of to use. So the underlayer, this base coat, adds just even more tooth and grip for the next layer of paint, basically. And here I show the frame. It's a beautiful frame. But see those little swirly leaves that kind of cascade over the picture opening? Yeah, those are going to cause some issues for us later. So this piece of backing that I cut is just foam core board and I'm painting it in a solid color. This is what I'm going to affix my three dimensional little mini sculpture to. Now that I have two coats of the base acrylic, I can have fun and add details. So you can add little patterns and designs or you can mix and blend colors to add shading and make it a little more realistic and you can really do anything that you would do with a normal acrylic painting on this surface now tiny tiny detail brushes will definitely come in handy here in this case on my dinosaur i've used the base coat for my dark slash medium tone so i'm adding brighter highlights over top to give it more dimension yep sadly one of the clouds had to go so what i did was i just got an exacto knife and kind of slipped it in between where it was joined and just pried it off and so there's a little bit of crackling but i just took a very very light like the finest sandpaper you can and sanded that so see there's always a way to fix almost anything really really fine sandpaper can also be used to sand the surface if you end up with any bumps or unevenness after baking that you notice and want to adjust these can be sanded which is great this also helps if there's any sharp edges like i noticed a couple sharp edges just from the cookie cutters that i hadn't softened down with my rubber ended tool before baking because i just wasn't paying attention so those can be sanded away as well so cute as you can see i also added some sparkle paint over the top in some areas that I wanted to accent. I didn't show this in the video because <laughs> to get the glitter exactly where I wanted it, it was hard to film and all you could see was the top of my head because I had this thing like an inch from my face, just meticulously 
dotting sparkle places, so just figured I'd tell you I did it, but yeah, nothing to see here. I also didn't show the very boring part, but important part of me coating it with a clear glass medium at the end to seal it. Thanks for watching! Sculpey is not just for kids, and I hope to continue to improve my skills, and I will actually be teaching a polymer clay class with my um, inclusive arts program, Art Shop, that I work with at Creative360 in Midland coming up this winter. I'm sure as I continue to practice, I will be showing you some other cool polymer clay stuff in the future. So if you enjoyed this and want to see more or want to see some of my other fun art demos, then be sure to subscribe. Bye!